Yo, what's going on, guys? In today's video, Ian and I are going to be answering your most searched questions. Nah, bro, you forgot the Q&A part, bro. It's a Q&A. Oh, okay. Account is asking, do you think Expo will ever get a buff or deserves a buff? To be honest, I think Expo doesn't really deserve a buff. It's quite an annoying card to face. And whenever you get, like, countered by Expo, it's so frustrating. And nobody really likes to enjoy facing Expo. Maybe just some of the counters to Expo needs a nerf, but... Ian might have a different opinion on it. Yeah, I feel like there's a small chance Expo gets buffed very far in the future, maybe a very small buff of some kind. Does it deserve a buff? I feel like no, it does have some metas where it's quite bad in, but at the same time, it, like in this current meta, it's actually quite good just because the meta suits it very nicely, so I think it's better off not getting a buff. It's too toxic to play against anyways. Alright, next up, Eric said, What other games do you enjoy besides Clash? I mainly play Clash, but I do play a bit of Brawl Stars and Minecraft. Not too much by myself, but just with my friends and stuff like that, it's pretty fun. But as far as single player games, mostly Clash Royale. I really like to play Fortnite. <laughs> That's pretty much it though. I don't think I really play anything other than Fortnite. I don't even play Fortnite that much right now, but I guess <laughs> if I'm playing another game, it's, it's usually Fortnite, I guess. Because I used to play Fortnite before I started Clash Royale, but then I quit Fortnite to play Clash Royale, but then I... <laughs> I played it like um, one time before. Yeah, it's pretty fun, but it hasn't been recently. So pretty much I've only been playing Clash Royale recently. And Eugene says, what's a good amount of matches to play in a day? Honestly, like if you're a guy like Ian, you probably need like <laughs> 150 to 300 games a day to maintain your, your level. But if you're like a really good player, I'd say like maybe like 20 or 30 is okay. Maybe play it for like an hour or so. It just depends on like if you want to like become better maintain your skill level or something like that or if you're just having fun if you're having fun i'd say just play until you're not having fun anymore if you're not having fun i just get off and if you're trying to improve just play as much as you can yeah i feel like it really depends it also depends if you're a casual player or a pro player or trying to be a pro player for most people i would say anywhere from like maybe 5 to 15 matches for me i don't know how many matches i play a day maybe like I want to say like 17 on average recently, but at the end of the season when, you know, it's, it's going to be like a lot more competitive, I usually play a good amount more, but yeah, I don't play too much actually, really just the global tournaments and stuff like that are most of my matches. Alright, next up, one of the best bananas said, when will Riley Barrel get buffed? Uh, honestly, it's so broken. It's the number one meta deck right now. So I would uh, really, I would really hope what? it doesn't get a buff. It's, dude. It's what like, what are you saying right now, bro? It's it's goblin drill for three elixir, bro. So in in my personal humble opinion, I would what? say, I would say never, never. What do you think, Riley? Dude, goblin barrel is literally a flying positive elixir trade. <laughs> that card sucks, and it it literally needs an emergency buff. That card is <laughs> genuinely terrible. And if it doesn't get buffed, I don't know what to say, man. I hope it gets buffed soon because. That card is like literally what the spark used to be called a trash can, but I guess it is not on wheels. It's just like a trash can in the air. A flying trash can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. We have the Brian Sanic. What's your guys' opinion on why a lot of decent top 10,000 players can't make the jump to high ladder and any advice to them? Um, Honestly, I feel like the biggest difference between a top 10,000 player and a 1,000 player isn't really anything major. I think it's like a little bit more understanding of the game and maybe a difference in deck like a top 10,000 player could easily go to a top 1,000 player if they ended up switching their deck or something like that and I guess a nice way to improve would also be just like to watch players better than you and keep playing ladder because ladder always pairs you up against people at like a similar skill level to you or that's like the closest way to play someone on your skill level and that's the best and easiest way to improve yeah um so there are two ways to do it either you could listen to Riley or you could just decide to, you know, switch your decks to one of the broken meta decks. Like, I feel like each meta, there's always a certain deck that you can just play and pretty much master right away and just push up way higher than you should be able to. Like, a while ago, it was the Evo Recruits Goblin Giant deck. And nowadays, I feel like it's probably Eagolem. Eagolem is so broken at countering Cannoneer, so that could definitely work out for you guys, too. And Giant Graveyard, don't forget about that, oh, guys. Yeah, yeah. If you're looking for a new finish, play Giant Graveyard ASAP. The, the graveyard got a nerf, but I really don't notice the nerf at all, honestly. <laughs> I forgot it got nerfed. Yeah. And next up we have Zachary. He said, do you guys have any interesting troop slash spell ideas? Hmm. I'm not sure, actually. I feel like it's pretty hard to come up with a new spell idea. Even the Clash Royale team, I don't think they almost ever come up with new spells. They pretty much always just steal it from Clash of Clans. Um, As far as a troop... 
Honestly, I'm not even sure. I might let you go first, Riley, and I'll answer this question after you. For a new troop, I think it'd be pretty cool if they had, like, a ranged card. Like, hear me out, a ranged card, but with, like, the littlest health ever. But it did, like, a lot. I don't know. I, I feel like it should do, like, a ranged card that flies. Like, a flying ranged card. Not like the flying machine, but kind of like the flying machine that maybe dies to, like, a zap. Like, kind of like an air, like, a ranged air card that dies to a zap. Maybe, like, kind of like a dark goblin, but in the air or something like that. And maybe like, I don't know, may, maybe like an air champion could be kind of cool, like in like an air champion, but it'd oh, be yeah. like probably broken and annoying too. And then for like a new spell idea, maybe they could like just like rework the goblin barrel and make it playable or something. <laughs> probably just like give the give the goblin barrel some like spawn in damage or something, like make it usable and maybe give it like an extra goblin or something, man. Yeah, that would practically add a new spell to the game because currently I face Goblin Barrel like once every 10,000 games, so it's pretty much non-existent. <laughs> um, so anyways, about about a new spell or troop, I don't really have any great ideas right now on the spot. Probably if I thought about it more, I would. I'm sure in the past I had some ideas, but I probably already forgot about it. Honestly, though, I like, I like spawners quite a bit. Not like the actual um, like spawners like Goblin Hut, but I like the things like Goblin Cage. Like I was really... Uh, excited for the goblin cage when it first came out so i kind of like to see uh interesting mechanics like that for maybe buildings because i feel like a lot of the buildings are pretty similar so it would be nice to have some kind of stuff like that okay and we do have the next comment here from happy just a general one i would like for you two to answer one do you have any tips for counting elixir and two any tips for knowing your opponent's card cycle i've been trying to do it myself for a while and can't seem to get the hang of it um okay for elixir there's one of two things you can do one you can just do what ian does and watch yourself on a second device which works quite <laughs> well put it, no that's your traits on me clash royale is ever gonna uh. remove it and <laughs> i don't think clash royale is ever gonna remove it they actually quite encouraged it in the 2020 crl season or number two is a tip that i like to give because personally like, i can feel out their elixir whether i'm like looking at it or not like you can kind of get like a general feeling if they're low but nice way to have another feeling if they're low is like for an example if they play a golem in the back the most amount they can have with like have is two and you can use your elixir bar and their elixir bar to like count because the elixir bar goes up at the same time so if they play like a musketeer they have minimum like maximum six elixir and stuff like that and you can kind of just do like quick math throughout the game and there's going to be like obvious reset points where like nobody's playing so if you lose track you, you can always like get back on track with doing something like that and then yeah. for Counting card cycle. Card cycle is a lot easier in my opinion because you don't need to know every eight card in your opponent's deck. It's much easier actually to know their entire rotation in single elixir. And I feel like most top players know the card rotation, at least in single elixir. But I would just like I would start out counting the most important cards. Like if you're a log bait player, maybe count their log and maybe like another important card. Like try to focus on maybe one or two cards that are the most important because trying to track a whole deck could get quite hard and you could get lost very easily. Yeah, I feel like Riley gave a pretty good answer there, especially for the card cycle thing. That's pretty much what I would have said. Um, as far as counting elixir, go watch my video, bro. I just made a video on it like a week ago. I would highly recommend that. Shameless. Shameless. <laughs> yeah, honestly, I'll just say that. Just go check out my video, guys. I made a full dedicated video for it, so that'll give you a lot more tips than I could give right now in a few seconds. So next up, we have Q QLS. He said, have you ever had a burnout? What are your tips for that? I mean, not really. Sometimes I feel like playing Clash Royale. Other times I'm not really that excited to play, but I don't know. It's always nice. I feel like for us top players, we have more of a reason to keep on playing since we can like earn money from it. Uh, like me and Riley can make money from content and also just like just like trying to go for better finishes and stuff like that. There's always, well, there's pretty much always a reason to keep on playing, but I know for certain players, they might not have the same reasons to keep playing like we do. Um, but honestly... I don't really ever have a burnout. What about you, Riley? Well, to be fair, I think I play a, quite a bit more than Ian. At least recently I have. I've been playing so much recently, practicing for <laughs> ERL and stuff like that. I've been playing a ton. And I don't really ever get burnt out either because, well, it kind of sucks to say. I don't know why it sucks to say, but I've been having a lot of fun playing, I guess. Cause I've been, <laughs> wow, like, how dare you? A lot. I've been winning a lot more of my games. And, like, obviously winning is fun, right? And yeah. Well, 
most of the meta decks are quite annoying, like maybe Lava Hound, Golem, and Giant Graver and stuff like that, but beating them is so funny, and I just have like quite a good time playing the game in general, so it's kind of hard to get burnt out doing something that you enjoy, and Ian made a pretty good point about like earning money or something like that. Like I don't really care about earning money from the game, but I guess it's definitely like a benefit and stuff like that, and I just have like goals in mind for the game that I want to reach, so... I don't ever like think about getting burnt out because I never get really get like tired of playing the game. But I guess a good way to avoid burnout would just to be if you're not having fun to stop playing the game, at least for a decent bit of time, maybe like the rest of the day, a few hours or something like that. Yeah, Riley, you can't quit until you get a top one finish. Dude, <laughs> I lost top one through a glitch and that's how you got your first top one. Congratulations, <laughs> man. I'm so proud of you. Let's go. Benefiting off of what you're glitching out. <laughs> Let's go. With the next comment here, we have Dark Prince official. How did Ian and Riley meet each other? Well, no, it's Ryler. From, Ryler. <laughs> nope, Riley. <laughs> from what I remember, I well, actually, I started playing Clash Royale quite late compared to every like all the top players. I guess I started in 2019, but I think I met Ian like sometime around 2020. I wasn't exactly friends with him, but some of my friends from Discord added me to a twitter group chat and i guess i met him in like a twitter group chat that was mainly based around expo players and like a few of their friends but i got added into there and i know ian was in there but i think i got to know him better in like a different group chat maybe like one year later or something like that it was just mainly like meeting him through other people i think but i didn't really talk to him that much for like a little bit because there was like so many people in there i guess yeah i'm not exactly sure when we met i think we just eventually followed each other on twitter I'm not sure when, maybe like in 2020 or 2021, probably 2020, I think Riley was just known to me as, you know, one of the top one worst log bait players ever. <laughs> I remember Riley was struggling so much. In 2020, so much. I was trash. I had like one top 200 minutes in 2020. Yeah, I remember you were, you, you were struggling so much on ladder, but then eventually you started to get some higher finishes. Uh, you, you weren't like the best ladder player at that time, but you were decent. But then I think like once no, Mighty Miner came out. All day. Yeah, but once Mighty Miner came out, then you just then you just started getting no, the top before finishes. Before Mighty Miner came out, I had a top fifteen finish, bro. Chill out, I had a top fifteen finish. Probably with something boosted, like the it was probably the old Goblin Joha huh? or the Piggies when it was no, first released. No, it was with Piggies EQ actually. It was oh with yeah, Piggies of course. <laughs> nah, but I also had a number twenty one finish with Log Bait back in the day. I had like a twenty one, a twenty two, and a twenty three actually. <laughs> not bad. <laughs> not great, but like not trash either. I guess it was some of the best Log Bait finishes back then, but not the best. I guess it was like decent. All right, next up we have Toe. He said, "Who is more likely to qualify for Worlds, Riley or Ian?" I would definitely say Ian, you know, very obvious answer. Um, <laughs> but to be fair, though, I thought me and Riley would have quite a good chance to qualify for Worlds. But since there's now only going to be eight spots, it definitely will be quite a bit harder. So I think we're going to have to practice quite a bit and train very hard and maybe get a bit lucky to, to get in. Yeah, honestly, if there was 16 players, I actually thought we were both going to make it, to be honest, because... I didn't really practice at all last year, and I knew if I practiced this year, I could probably easily qualify. And Ian was really close to qualifying last year if he yeah. didn't have like quite a few bad months, I guess, in the beginning of CRL. And he was he would have qualified pretty easily himself, actually, because he had some pretty strong final months when he started practicing. So I thought that if we both practiced, we'd both qualify easily. But I feel like now with only seven total spots, because one of the eight spots. Oh yeah, that's true. China player. Yeah, that's a good it, point. It's gonna be like. It's going to be very difficult and it's going to be quite luck based, honestly, because not luck based in the sense of like, oh, a bad player is going to go to world finals. But like, I mean, if you do, if you perform poorly in one tournament, like that's like one of like six chances. No, it's one of five chances gone because there's only five golden ticket events this year. And there's like one community like event. So I guess there's six total events and then there's one consistency one. So last year there yeah. was seven based off of consistency. And it's gonna be really hard to win a tournament when people like Muhammad Light are winning every single time. It can be quite difficult to actually. Probably gonna just be down to if you're paired up on the same side of the bracket of him if you have a chance or not. I'm so surprised so, that they only gave one community spot, or not community spot, but I mean like the point slot. I feel like they should have at least yeah, given like five or like eight or something. One point slot is crazy, dude. But yeah. to answer your question about who's more likely, me or Ian, <laughs> I'm gonna have to go with myself here because <laughs> Ian just don't got that dog in him. Bro, I do, bro. <laughs> I'm a big dog. You do not got that dog in you. <laughs> I'll be practicing a lot, guys. <laughs> okay. With the next comment here from X Driven, what do you guys think about the Diamond Pass? Is it worth buying compared to the previous price or is it fairly priced now? Honestly, 
I would say it's worth it if you're looking to get the evolution of the season. Like, for example, this season it's Evolution Tesla. So if you like the Evolution Tesla, I'd say it's very much worth it. Maybe like a little bit overpriced. Like, I think it should be lower, but I'd still say it's worth it. I mean, I think it's like 10 US dollars, maybe like a little bit more or a little bit less, but it's yeah, like it's about 12. 10 US dollars. So if you're looking to get the evolution i'd say it's very much worth it and you should definitely purchase it but if you don't want the evolution i'd say there's no really point buying it because the only grab in the past real is the evolution in my opinion yeah I, I kind of agree with that i feel like you might as well probably get the gold pass or something if you don't care about the evolution but pretty much most of the people who buy the diamond pass rail is really just for the evolution mainly mainly the pro players are buying it because they kind of have to in order to compete even like semi-pro players or just people trying to get top 1000 they kind of have to buy it just to have a decent chance on ladder unless it's a horrible evolution then you don't really have to buy it all right next up we have mujik man he said what inspired both you and riley to start playing and making clash Royale content well i started playing quite a long time ago i think in maybe early 2017 or the end of 2016 basically me and my brother were on vacation i think and then he just showed me the game and then i started playing i remember my first epic card was the prince i'm pretty sure um and yeah as far as making content it was kind of random i was just like pushing top ladder always doing pretty well and then basically a bunch of my friends were just saying i should make content and then i didn't really listen to them for quite some time until i don't know when maybe like late 2021 mid 2021 i was making a few videos but not really much until 2022 i really started grinding and using commentary in my videos and stuff like that so i would just say my friends for that yeah for, i think for me i started playing clash Royale because all of my friends at school and some of my even online friends who i played minecraft with had clash Royale, and literally everyone was playing and i got told to get it so I ended up getting it and I got it around like the beginning of 2019 or the like December of 2018. And that's about when I started. And for the content, I have a friend. Well, I guess most of you guys, if not all of you guys will know him, but Best in A. I knew him before he started YouTube. Not many people know that, but I was friends with him before he started YouTube. And then he started YouTube. And then I have a few other friends named uh, Gems, Kenny, and Chakra, all Clash Royale YouTubers. It's funny enough, all four of them are Expo YouTubers, but all of them told me to make YouTube videos and I ended up making YouTube videos because I think the person who pushed me the most was probably Gems. I think Gems pushed me the most. He even gave me a shout out when I had like maybe like a few thousand subscribers from only uploading like a few videos of me being high with log bait, like maybe like once every couple of months and um, Gems gave me a shout out. So I guess mainly like to those Expo players, they're like the main reasons why I started YouTube because I they just kept pushing me and pushing me to do it. Bro, I remember back in the day, um, me and Bestiny were talking, we were just like talking about random stuff and then eventually I started YouTube and I got like 5 or 10k subs and, he, and then I just asked him for some advice and stuff like that and then he just egoed me. But then after that, I, I got like three times as many subscribers as him. <laughs> I don't Damn, know, just kind of funny. Okay. Just had to flex a little bit, you know. You feel me? Yeah. Okay, from Ali Reza, what's your plans for the future besides YouTube? For me personally, I guess for me, I would say my plans for the future are just like outside of youtube because i mean i obviously said without youtube um probably would be to start working out and maybe get like stronger because to be honest i'm quite weak i mean i'm stronger than ian but i'm still <laughs> quite weak <laughs> and um maybe like eventually purchase my own house would be kind of cool as well because yeah. i'm gonna move out probably at the end of this year of my parents house or maybe like to like sometime next year for sure so maybe just like buy like have enough to buy my own house maybe at some point in the future that'd be quite nice yeah um for me i'm not too sure yet i'm kind of just gonna see where things take me i'm always gonna try my best in everything um you know i've been working out for a few months i just want to stay in good shape and stuff like that and i definitely do want to try to become the best at some things like i'm already really good at clash rail but i kind of also want to be one of the best at some real life things like maybe running and stuff like that i've been running quite a bit recently i did have some circulation issues that were stopping me from running too much but i'm trying to get them solved and stuff like that um and yeah i mean i don't really care too much what i do just as long as i live a good life and um leave a good impression or not a good impression but just like leave good things behind for people like good good uh memories and good things uh to say about me i guess all right next up we have crow of judgment he said would you ever consider having ken or oj on the podcast 
I mean, it really depends what we're covering in that podcast episode. I'm not really sure what we'd do with them. I feel like KFC would just completely troll, so I'm not sure what he would be on there for. But OJ, I know he did quite a few, or he used to do quite a few videos on like tech and stuff like that. So I don't know, he might know some interesting things about Clash Rail or know a lot about the past of Clash Rail. So that could be interesting. Yeah. I don't know what we'd get them on for, but I mean, I'm definitely open to it and up to it. Like if they wanted to get on, I'd definitely be fine with it. Like I'd have no objection to it. They're both great people. I've talked to them both and I've met OJ in real life. He was like a very nice guy. So I'd, I'd definitely be fine with it as long as we had like the right topic that would fit them. Okay, with the next comment here, we have, can you give us tips? Of, okay. <laughs> I'll um, let Riley take one. that one. Next comment, next comment. Um, when will Riley graduate from wait what? Okay. Um, next comment. No, no. Do you guys think Super Stone should focus more on free to play players this year? Yeah, they should definitely focus on free to play players more. The lucky drop is a good start, but I think they should be a little bit better, I guess, and they should add a few more things to help free to play players. It'd be like very nice and maybe like make other ways. Like, I think what they did with the challenges, adding the books and the challenges was a very good idea. It just sucks how there's only like a one-time reward. Like maybe they could refresh every month or maybe every week or something like that. Because a one-time reward is good and all, but it's nothing crazy. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Like once a month, they could add like maybe some random pretty useful reward in there. That sounds like a good idea. Um, I mean, they did kind of say they're focusing on free-to-play players now with this update. But if you ask me, I feel like the lucky drops aren't quite good enough. They seem like... Or, or, or they seemed like they were going to be quite good, but it really just feels like you pretty much always get a common, so you just get like, I don't know, like 10, <clears throat> 10 rare wild cards or something not that useful. I don't know why, but I feel like they pretty much always give you common drops. Maybe they should buff the rates of getting an upgraded drop. Next up from Realms Realize, we have, where do you see yourself in five years, both on YouTube and in real life? Honestly, on YouTube, I have no idea. I feel like in five years, I'm going to probably still be doing Clash Royale and stuff, but I feel like I'm also going to be experimenting with some other stuff. I don't know, I'm thinking of making a fitness account on Instagram, for example, and like testing out different types of content, uh, not just Clash Royale, maybe even some real life stuff like that. So we'll have to see with that. Uh, as far as my Clash Royale channel, I feel like I'll have 1 million subscribers, hopefully. <laughs> we'll have to see about that. In real life, there's a chance I'm already going to get married by that time. I'm not even sure, though. I'll probably have kids and stuff like that, some little goblins running around. No, I'm just kidding, not kids okay. yet, but I might get married though, maybe. Um, and yeah, I'll probably, be, I'll probably be the most jacked Clash Royale player of all time uh, within five years. And I'll probably be saving up a lot of money, maybe I'll buy a house by then and stuff like that, or at least be able to buy a house when I want to, when I find a good area to do that. I feel like I'm probably gonna buy a house and stuff like that once I once I find someone to be with, like, a partner, like, someone that I'm really <laughs> confident in. Because I feel like it's not really that nice to live by yourself. I, I'd rather, you know, live with someone else as well. Man, I apologize to that woman who you marry in five years. <laughs> Bro, you better apologize <laughs> to your future woman, not to mine. <laughs> <laughs> um, for, like, where I see myself in five years, um, hopefully with uh, maybe a girlfriend... <laughs> No, guys, maybe. Riley's going to go from a <laughs> goblin to a goblin giant within five years. <laughs> <laughs> okay, man, okay. Yeah, hopefully with a house and maybe living with, like, my girlfriend. Potential. Or, 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 maybe I could get Aragon. Wait, what? Okay. Um, <laughs> and then where I see myself on YouTube in five years, I still see myself doing content in five years. I don't know about Clash Royale. I mean, I hope it's Clash Royale because it's my favorite game, but I don't know if it would still be Clash Royale. Hopefully it is, though. But, you know, you never know where the future takes you, but I still see myself doing content in five years for sure. Wait, what kind of content, if not Clash Rail? Probably just a different game, because I love games. Hmm. Yeah, maybe a different okay. Supercell game or something. Can Soup from MK... Can Supercell keep making evolutions and not destroy the game in the long haul by making every card evolved? I think they could make every card evolve and not ruin the game. It just like I love the idea of evolutions. They're so much fun and they're like a nice change of pace and a very unique idea to the game. The only thing that I don't like and that I think should be changed or removed is just better balance changes. Like if the evolutions had better balance changes, they would be so cool and so much fun. But when they're really broken on balance, it just creates like a huge like 
unnice game to play because you're just facing the same thing every time and usually there's nothing you can do to stop it. Like the evil ice spirit is like the perfect like idea of what an evolution should be. Like it's nothing crazy, rarely like sometimes crazy stuff happens with it. It helps you on defense and maybe sometimes on offense, but it doesn't completely change the tide of the game every single time you play it. But it does give you like a nice like add on to your card and you can do some cool stuff with it. Yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, I feel like they def they de they definitely can. It just depends how they decide to do it moving forward. I'm not sure if they're gonna stick to the same plan, like keep on releasing two a month or try to do something different or start balancing them differently. Because currently, it seems like they're pretty much always trying to release a new broken evolution so everyone buys the pass rail for that month. Um, I don't really see them making weak evolutions, or at least purposely i don't know it seems like the ice spirit was purposely weak but at the same time super cell might just be that out of touch with reality that they thought it would be a good evolution next up we have arjun fanish he said do you think hog deserves a nerf i would say buff hog honestly yes. it's just so unplayable no it's so unplayable in this meta because everyone has like the tesla tornado goblin drill deck it's just completely unusable i'd much rather use hoggies it's basically like double value of a hog rider for one more elixir in my opinion, I don't think Hog Rider deserves a nerf per se. If I had to buff or nerf it, I would give it a nerf. Nah, you would give it a buff. Hog Rider's quite weak right now. Hog Rider is quite weak right now because of all the cannoneer. I don't even think it's because of the Tesla and the tornado. I think it's mainly because of the cannoneer, because before you could maybe get firecracker damage or outcycle people or outplay them and stuff like that. But with the cannoneer tower, the hog rarely ever gets the hit, even if you get through all their counters and outcycle them and stuff like that. So I think a good start to helping hog rider in the meta would just be to nerf cannoneer oh yeah i was gonna say that yeah cannoneer from miles Bo bodden what is the most consistently good deck throughout all the metas minor poison without a doubt minor poison that's all i need to say minor poison man by the way nate if you're listening or someone uh, sends this to you i don't know how you don't have a top 10 finish it's heartbreaking yeah, me neither I have, I have no clue honestly nate, nate just loves choking every season yeah i would have to agree with riley um, I guess the one other obvious thing would be 2.6, but 2.6 was really good back in the day, but recently, even though it's still been somewhat viable for a couple people, it's really not very good these days. So yeah, definitely just some type of minor deck, usually minor poison. Next up from Hugo, we have what are good matchups and stuff. See, there's two different ways you can interpret this. One thing is you might have a good matchup, like say you have Splash Yard against 2.6, that's a really easy matchup for splash yard but the other thing is if you face a certain player who's just not good at the game like riley for example you know it's going to be a good matchup like <laughs> even if he has a counter to me i know i'm going to win so th that's kind of like also a good matchup for me okay that's quite ironic coming from you of course mr i always lose to riley with a hard counter <laughs> but <laughs> matchups nah. are basically like the best way to describe what matchups are is like the percentage of times you should be winning a game so like if someone has a good matchup they should be winning a matchup more often than they lose it if they have a bad matchup you're typically going to lose it more than you win it but i would say a good matchup is just when you have a very easy game against your opponent not like an easy game as in like you played better than them or whatever but like on most often you should be winning that deck like usually their cards struggle against your cards that kind of thing i guess okay from empower empowered mindfulness okay i had trouble reading that one to both of you what is a good amount of time after which a player starts getting good um i feel like there's no estimated like good amount of time a player should start becoming like quote unquote good at the game because good is quite subjective like good to me will be different from maybe ian or good to ian might be different from like an another person and like good to them might not be good to you and stuff like that so i feel like there's no really set time when a player should get good because to everyone, someone won't be good. And anybody to somebody could be good as well. Yeah, I really feel like it depends on your goals and stuff with the game because a lot of people just play it casually and don't ever really want to get super good. I mean, they want to keep on progressing and stuff, but they don't really care to be one of the top players. So it really depends on how much effort you're putting into it. Next up from Life According to Eli, what do you see in the future of competitive clash honestly guys it's looking pretty bad i thought it would keep on getting bigger and bigger like you know bigger prize pools and more amounts of players and stuff like that but it seems like it's just shrinking and shrinking so i feel like it might die out in a few years to be honest with you like crl they've been just having the amount of world finals players for 
a few years now. I mean, they haven't halved it every time, but it went from like 32 in 2021 to 16 in 2022 and 2023, and then now 8 in 2024. So I don't know, like if Supercell is trying to purposely um, like shut it down over time or something like that. Not really sure about that. Yeah, I don't see very much of a future for competitive Clash unless Clash Trail wants to... If they don't want to increase the prize, like, I mean, the player count in the World Finals, they need to increase the amount of tournaments played, and they need to increase the prize pool, I think, because they have basically the same prize pool for significantly less players, and the best way for a competitive game to, like, a competitive scene of a game to go off and become popular and become more played is with like the most amount of people thinking that they have a chance and they can earn money and maybe do something but when th this year people did the math and a total of 40 players if different people earn every single month 40 people can earn money in 2024 so from competitive that is literally terrible exactly like that is genuinely awful 40 people can earn money in 2024 through competitive clash royale clash royale league which is terrible especially compared to previous years where it was much much higher and much much more and that's the maximum so like obviously when you have muhammad light and moogie qualifying every year that's two less spots every single month so it's not even going to be 40 if i had to guess it'd probably be around like maybe like 22 or something like that yeah. so unless they do some serious changes i don't really see competitive being anything in the future it's probably completely dead yeah and we have the next comment here from wizard grizzly bear Top 20 cards that need a buffer rework. 10 from Riley, 10 from Ian, man. Yeah, that might be a bit too much. Crazy, maybe five. I think we could probably do three or five. Yeah, maybe three five even. Or, or five. I, don't maybe, know. I think just, I guess I'll do three re three buffs and maybe two reworks, I guess. Okay. Um, For my first buff, I would say the Goblin Barrel. The card's just trash and it's just a flying it's broken to trade, like I said earlier. And then <laughs> I'd say the Mighty Miner. It's my favorite card in Clash Royale and it's quite weak right now anyways with all the counters going around. And for the final card buff, I'd probably like to see maybe a buff to the maybe Electra Wizard, honestly. That used to be one of my most favorite cards in the game, but kind of died down, I guess, because of all the better range cards in it. Electro Wizard doesn't even really need a buff, but I think it'd be cool to see it in the meta. Just get like the tiniest buff or something like that. For the reworks, I think they need to rework Graveyard and make it a fixed spawn pattern because it's completely broken and unfair that it spawns randomly. And then I would also rework the Miner because just like Graveyard, it's the only card that's random and you just have to cross your fingers and hope you get lucky when you're defending it. So those would be my two reworks for sure. Yeah, for me, I think the the three buffs I'll have to go for. Hmm. I mean, I would love a wizard buff. I don't know if it would be too fun to play against, but I definitely want them to just give that spawn in ability like the ice wizard has, except it would do like the damage of fire spirit and not slow anything down. I feel like that would be a really obvious change they could do. Oh, that would kill the goblin barrel. What are you even <laughs> saying right now? But it's five elixir though, and you could prediction rocket onto it, so I don't know, but I don't know why they're avoiding doing it so much. I feel like maybe because the mid ladder players will get mad and they know that. Um, for my second buff, honestly, I wouldn't mind a spawner buff. Like, okay, I was going to say Goblin Hut, which I know Riley hates, but actually even more so oh. than the Goblin Hut, I'm going to say Furnace because now Furnace, if you play a Furnace against Cannoneer, it just gets zero damage. So they definitely need to look into that and try to fix the interaction with that. Maybe they have to make the Furnace two Fire Spirits again because I feel like with one Fire Spirit, there's no way it's going to be viable if Cannoneer is going to stay the same as it is right now. I don't know why, but I just feel like spawner metas, even though they're so toxic at the same time, it would be nice to have a switch up in the meta besides just like Goblin Drill and Miner and Graveyard and stuff like that. And to be fair, spawner decks do counter Graveyard usually, so that could be nice to kick Graveyard a bit out of the meta. For my last buff, ooh, I don't even know actually. Um, Maybe Executioner. I wouldn't mind a very small Executioner buff. There's probably some other things that I'm forgetting, but yeah, I wouldn't mind a small Executioner buff. I feel like they shouldn't really um, do too much with Tornado. I mean, they, they might nerf Tornado, actually, so I think maybe they could nerf Tornado and then give Executioner a buff so the Executioner-Tornado combo could still be pretty nice. And as far as my reworks, it would be probably pretty similar to Riley. I definitely wouldn't mind a Graveyard rework, so I guess I'll call like a graveyard slash goblin drill slash minor rework as one of the spots because those are all kind of like similar cards that are just super hard to stop unless you predict them my other rework would probably be bowler because i feel like bowler 
it's just a very weird card i feel like it needs to have a specific use case instead of being like a card that can defend super well but then also act like a magic or trade the bridge sometimes i feel like they have to decide which type of card it's going to be instead of being like that i'm not exactly sure what they would do to it but yeah some type of rework could be pretty nice next up we have a comment from blackleg he said what is your favorite year in clash rail i mean i'll probably say this year uh because you know i've been doing so well in youtube and I've been getting, you know, top one finishes and stuff like that, which is pretty nice, of course. And I broke the world record for the most top one global tournament finishes, which is obviously great as well. But I feel like 2018 was so fun. 2018, it was like the crazy Executioner Tornado meta. It was so fun to play Executioner Hog way back in the day. It's a shame I wasn't super good at the game at that time. Otherwise, I would have abused the heck out of that and probably got top one and stuff like that. But yeah, I feel like that time was so interesting to me. I think for me, my favorite time in Clash Royale was in 2022 in the summer, the Mighty Miner Log Bait meta. That was by far my favorite no. year of Clash Royale. Like, those two months, those two, maybe three months, <laughs> were my favorite okay, time to be in fair, Clash Royale. Okay, to be fair, Riley, those those months when you when you were playing Log Bait Mighty Miner and I was playing Giant Skeleton Hog Rider, that was actually so fun, honestly. Yeah, that was so fun. I feel like the latter <laughs> meta was so like diverse and so broad. There was so many great viable decks, but... Most importantly, log bait was at its prime and at its <laughs> peak and the best it's ever been in probably like five years or so since like 2017 or something like that, which made the game very fun for a player like me. But even in general, like that's when I started using other decks too, because other decks like were very viable and more fun to play with just because I liked the entire like state of the game at that point. And then that's also like when my, when my YouTube really, really started to take off because I was number one and number two in the world every single day for like ever, like no matter what. So I'd say 2022. Which Evo is the best for log bait from Leandreo? Um, Evo Skeletons and Evo Tesla, I would say, are the two best Evos for log bait right now. But if you don't have the Evo Tesla, you can also use Evo Knight, Evo Skeletons, or Evo Knight, Evo Tesla. Just any two of those three are perfect, in my opinion. Yeah, I'm just going to have to go ahead and call Riley out for lying. I would say Evo Tesla is not that good in... in um log bait because i feel like if you're playing log bait the evo tesla only ever pops up one time it never really pops up multiple times like for expo sometimes i see the evo tesla go up and down so many times so it gets a lot of value but i think for log bait i'm gonna have to go ahead and correct riley and i would say probably evo knight and evo skeletons sound pretty good to me see ian the problem here is your lack of game knowledge and <laughs> i have more game knowledge than you buddy tesla. nope the evo tesla is very good against the meta decks like Goblin nah. Drill because they can't go Goblin Drill. Very good against Golem because there's a lot of Evo Bats and Logbait has a very hard time killing Evo Bats. There's a lot of mm. Lava Hound, which Evo Tesla is great against and Evo Skeletons are useless against. See, like, Ian, if you had my game knowledge, maybe you could qualify to the World Finals, but unfortunately, Bro. you do not have anywhere close to my game knowledge. Bro, what, what Riley isn't no, realizing gonna... is that it takes, like, probably, like, two decades um, to get to the Evo Tesla. So that by that time, Riley should already have a top one finish by the time he gets to an Evo Tesla, bro. Unfortunately for Ian, he has no game knowledge, man. Heartbreaking. <laughs> okay, next up we have White Raider. He said, how do you guys have time to record, edit, and post videos every day while streaming here and there? Well, I do stream every day now. I think Riley is also going to start streaming every day. Um, we don't edit our videos, though. We both do have an editor, and the editing doesn't take super long. It's mainly just like rendering the video can take some time, sometimes if it's a long video. Um, but to be fair for me... I mean, some days I'm pretty busy, other days I'm able to handle everything pretty well. It really just depends. The thing about being a Clash Royale YouTuber is that you have to be pretty flexible because if there's like a new update thing, you have to kind of mess up your schedule in order to be one of the first YouTubers to record it. But we're just pretty good at time management, usually, I feel like. I mean, sometimes, sometimes we're not the best at it and waste a bit of time, but personally, I'm pretty good with time management. I just, you know, work out early in the day, then I record a bit throughout the day um you know like run and stuff like that because i do do quite a few other things as well so i have to make sure i have time for everything i just put what's important first usually then if i have a bit of extra time at the end of the day then i can just do random stuff i think for me personally well i do have a guy who edits my videos and stuff like that like with thumbnail and editing but for recording i have enough time to record videos every day because as ian does he's kind of lying i don't have a life i just uh i play a lot of clash royale and i'm able to record because of that and Streaming. I do stream every day now, which is also fine because I had a lot of free time on my hands. Um, I think it's just like, I don't, I wouldn't say good time management, but I use my time on Clash Royale. So I have 
quite enough time to record a YouTube video and stream every day. And we do have the next comment here from Sean Clark. Do you think log bait can get back into the meta without barrel receiving an evolution? Honestly, unless the evolutions get like a complete rehaul, then I don't think log bait will get into the meta without like a new evolution. Like maybe not evolution goblin bro, but maybe like evolved goblin gang, evolved rascals or something like that. Like a log bait type of evolution, I think is the only way to really to bring log bait back in the meta at this point. Yeah, I feel like maybe maybe Riley's probably right about that one. I don't think um, log bait would be very good if it didn't get an evolution. I feel like it kind of needs that in order to get back in the meta because if it doesn't get an evolution, even if the cards in log bait become pretty good, I feel like there's usually better win conditions you can throw into a deck like that. Like probably even Goblin Drill instead of Barrel would be way better in that deck. So yeah, I don't think so without an Evo. And for the final question, we have... Um, a question from Amir, he said, what career would both of you have been pursuing if YouTube didn't work out? Okay, I'm pretty sure uh, Riley would be a construction worker, and me personally... <laughs> and me personally... Uh, wait, what happened? I think that's you. No, bro, that's all you, that's all you. Me personally, I feel like I'd probably be studying business and stuff like that. I did take a few business classes, I might be pursuing that a little bit. Not really sure, though, um, what I would be doing otherwise. I'd probably just be in college trying to figure out what i want to do in the future i think for me if i didn't do youtube i would probably be in law school the only thing that also interests me is probably like arguing with people and uh, <laughs> lawyers all they do is argue with people so i'd probably try to become a lawyer just for the fun of it because i have a lot of fun arguing with people randomly for no reason <laughs> so yeah, get paid right so riley the type of guy <laughs> <laughs> Okay, man. A lot of questions about Goblin Barrel buffs, man. Just shows yeah. how much Goblin Barrel buff. Okay, do you think three evolution slots will be? Whoa, whoa, that was the last question. Oh, that was the last question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh well, I guess I'll answer this guy's question anyway. <laughs> okay. Um, I think there will be more evolution slots in the future, but maybe not for a long time because they got a lot of negative feedback for two evolutions. Yeah, yeah. I don't think they're gonna add a third evolution slot or something like that anytime. In the near future i don't know i wonder if one day they're just gonna make every card um evolved or if they're gonna uh just keep a certain amount of slots we'll have to see about that okay guys we're gonna be doing the outro now riley said he's very good at speaking spanish so go ahead riley say the first part <laughs> muchas gracias <laughs> for watching and i'll see you in the next one no we'll see you in the next one bye